That was so <laughs> anticlimactic. I hate myself right now. It sounds like the airplanes are rocking. <laughs> that was way, way, way too much sugar. Welcome to Pisa Land, where theme park meets lean park, and you get the chance to go on one ride and one ride only. I feel like I need to keep my arms open like this because I might fall. Picks not included. I mean, this commitment is just wow. And squash the birthday cake. Today, we accidentally fall for a common misconception about a visit to Pisa. Absolutely fascinating. That it can be done in just one day. Cheers! <laughs> As we realize that there is a lot more to do than meets the eye. And the city is more than just its 800-year-old leaning tower. This is actually a bit disorienting. Don't forget to get the gelato. Hold on to your seats as we guide you on a fun, factual city walking tour. Through its medieval center, discovering what makes Pisa such a fascinating place. We're Matteo and Misha. We're currently traveling to all 20 regions of Italy on the ultimate Italian road trip. Subscribe to follow the adventure. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Dink. All right, it is 9.30 a.m. We are uh, climbing a hill on the way to the train station to get the 9.42 train to Pisa. Luckily, the train ride is only 30 minutes from here. And normally, Matteo and I aren't up walking around this early, but it is gorgeous. We're on top of the walls again here in Luca, and there's already people out for their morning walks, morning jogs, bike rides. Do you think we'll make it to the train? <laughs> oh, yeah, easy. It's like, I think, what does it say? It's five minute walk over here. So we gotta take the stairs down. Hmm. And then the train stations over there. Oh, perfect. Got a nice view of the walls. Are these stairs? Yes, they are stairs. Okay, is this what we have to take? Yeah. Oh, wow, this is like a... This is quite cool. <laughs> We've never been down here before. Now we're at the base of the Luca walls. Look at those walls. Even though it's 9.30, for some reason in Italy, it feels like you're up at 6 a.m. <laughs> because it's so peaceful and quiet. I feel like it really, the city doesn't really come alive no matter where you're at until roughly about 11. But it's very chill, very calm. I love it. And we're excited for our day in Pisa! Oh wow, we got here quick. We have a pretty brisk walking pace though. Is this okay? Oh please, yes! yes our train's here! Our train's going that way. Sitting backwards, I get motion sickness. I should have picked another two seats. I wasn't thinking about it. So now that we've on the train, Matteo's gonna check in our ticket and validate it. Good to go. Just a helpful tip for future traveling. Whenever you sit down on a train, airplane, bus, make sure you check the seat once you've got up. Because you'll be surprised how many people leave stuff sitting on the seat. Here there's also a Pisa Mover shuttle that takes you to the airport. So if you're at Pisa Centrale, you can just take that straight to the airport. So we just made it to Pisa Centrale. It is uh, about 10, 15. One thing to keep in mind with Pisa and also with Florence and a lot of other Italian train stations is that there is more than just one stop for some of these cities. So for Pisa, I think there's about four stops. Pisa Centrale is just one of them. So just because you hear Pisa, make sure that it's the right Pisa stop or the right Florence stop. Palermo, <laughs> Palermo has like 10. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also, my hair is like in a world of its own today. So I apologize if I look like I just Got came out train. of a tumble dryer. These curls, girls with curly hair, you know what I'm talking about. Some days you're like, it looks great. Other days you're like, you know, you just gotta let it do its thing because I don't know, I don't know what's going on today. Mateo's travel tip of the morning. I need to pee because I drank so much water this morning. But in the station, the toilets are one euro. Save your one euro, go to a cafe, buy a coffee, Use their bathroom. Be a lot easier, a lot of cheaper. Two birds, one euro. <laughs> There's also a bus terminal right outside here. King Vittorio Emanuele II. In 1861, after the unification of Italy, King Vittorio Emanuele II 
was the first king of a unified Italy. And so that's why there's a statue behind us. As Italy only lost its monarchy in 1946 after World War II. And just like our boy Giuseppe Garibaldi, you will find streets, piazzas, statues, all dedicated to him as well. So right now, we're on Corso Italia, which is one of the main shopping streets here. So you'll find the more like modern stuff like Zara, H&M, Sephora, and there's a bunch of cafes, beautiful architecture. Well, that's new. You don't see too many Victoria's Secrets here. You got a giant OVS. But our first stop, first order of the day, per usual, is gonna be a little breakfast. So we're going to Galileo Cafe. There's a couple things we wanna try. So that's how we are kicking off the day. It is a very cute street. My man behind me, Nicola Pisano, you hear his name throughout Tuscany a lot. He's often referred to as one of the fathers of Italian sculpture. A lot of the buildings and palaces and squares you see around here were actually designed by him. That looks uncomfortable. Oh goodness. And that man's literally in the cage trying to clean the window. This is one of the first times in Italy that I've ever seen this funny blue thing. It actually looks like a bicycle repair station. The tools are all on pieces of wire, but the only problem with this is that all the tools have been stolen. So I'm guessing No this way. Was, yeah. There's still one. What are you gonna do with No, there's the like a little wire? baby wrench and pliers. See, so you and can is that a bike. I've never seen that. Neither have I. That's actually very creative. So we made it to our cafe here. Let's see. Ooh. See, si. that's so fun. I didn't know what the other one was. It's pistachio. Oh. Perfecto. Oh my God. This is like the prettiest one we've ever gotten. Grazie. That's fine. Oh, we can sit over there. So Matteo's a lucky duck because this is the first time we've ever come across a pistachio crema di caffè. Normally, it's just the standard one. It's October, so they're about to stop serving these at cafes because it's a summer thing, but thankfully it's still warm enough that we were able to get one. But this is the fanciest and cutest one I've ever had. Normally they just dispense it into the cup, but here they actually put like a chocolate sauce in the cup and then they put chocolate sauce on top of it for both of ours. The most similar thing I can compare it to texture wise is like a McFlurry or like a milkshake type thing, but this is coffee and chocolate. I've been waiting all week for this. That is divine. Every time I have one of these, it's like the first time I've ever had it. This is so delicious. That chocolate sauce really kicks it up a notch. Excellent touch. I know it's only like 10.30 in the morning right now, but who cares? We're gonna be on a sugar high today. Mm. That is delicious. I'm excited for Mateo to try his pistachio one because it's a first for us. Oh wait, it's really fluffy. Why is it so fluffy? What is it? It's like a super light and fluffy ice cream. It's like a gelato, but like a breakfast one. But like a milk, it is, it's like a, it's like a little bit thicker than a milkshake, but not thick, but fluffy. Mm. It tastes like chocolate and pistachio. If you've been following along this adventure, you know that I love everything pistachio. Except for that one time, I had that one that was a bit too intensely pistachio down in Sicily, Aragona. Might have had something to do with the fact that you ate about 25 pistachio desserts back to back to back, but That's I true. could, I mean, I could be wrong. Mm. So is the pistachio flavor strong in this one? Is it good? Mm. Oh, it's delicious. I actually almost, maybe you wouldn't do it with the chocolate. The chocolate almost dulls the pistachio a little bit. Just pistachio. It's delicious. It's light. This is the first time I've come across something so fluffy here. That's in between all the things that we eat and drink. It is delicious. So I like pistachio, but not nearly to the degree that Mateo does, but I always like to try these things. I literally have 
literally tastes like they just creamed down the nut and made it like an ice cream milkshake. It leaves the aftertaste as if you've just eaten a handful of pistachios. So if you're a pistachio lover, I can definitely see why you would go for this. I can definitely tell why Mateo likes it, but two scoops is good for me. I'm definitely way more on like the normal coffee chocolate train. So it's interesting though. Let's give this coffee one a try. No, the, the coffee one's better. You think? The coffee one's better and it's stronger. It actually tastes like a coffee. The pistachio one's more of a gelato. This is more of a coffee coffee. Yeah, I'd get the coffee one. Get the coffee one. But you can get a smaller size in this. Michelle just said get the large ones. <laughs> so you can get like half sizes. Maybe get like a little bit of pistachio, a little bit of coffee. Give them a test try yourself. So Crema de Café was actually invented in Naples by women who didn't want to forego their afternoon cup of coffee on the hot summer days. So they came up with the idea to put their coffee with sweetened, thick whipped cream and just like mix it on up so that you can still get your coffee kick in a nice, cold, beautiful way. And that's why they only have it in the summer because it's meant for hot weather. So you won't, if you're here in the winter, I actually think the cutoff is probably October. I'm surprised we found it today, but... Best invention ever. In our Thailand, mm. these little really crappy serviettes that you come across in every gelateria and bakery, in all little cafes, they're not actually for wiping your hands. They're so that you can hold your pastry and not do it to your hands, which kind of makes sense, but it's also quite annoying. You just sometimes you just miss a good old napkin, you know? This napkin's not gonna help. Mateo just bit into it and the chocolate like just popped out the top. I mean, that does look, oh, so creamy. Mateo's Italian travel tip of the day, actually travel tip in general. Always keep a thing of wet napkins in your bag for situations such as this. Okay, well that's- That does look good though. Oh. It's gonna... <laughs> Don't get it on your pants. That's aggressive. At least you know it's full. Yeah, she's squirting off the side. It's good though. Nom, 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 nom. It's going everywhere. <laughs> I'm not winning. At least they didn't skim. Okay, here we go. Oh, that is so you. much chocolate. <laughs> that's too much chocolate for me. And that's saying a lot. It's okay. Just be on a sugar high today. As I said, napkin doesn't do anything. <laughs> and here we are. This video is not sponsored by Kleenex. There's no classy way to eat this. Just, <laughs> just enjoy it. Just, just enjoy it. That was too much chocolate, even for me. It's very common here that you hear of the Conetto Classico, which is just plain. There's nothing in it. Because it's times like these when you realize that you wish you'd just got a plain one. It's, sometimes there's too much chocolate. And sometimes they're too skimpy on the chocolate. This time wasn't one of those times. It's like a roulette. Yeah. While Mateo went to wash all the chocolate off his hands, I'm busy eating my croissant. And it is full with cream. It's still really warm and it is just delicious. The cream croissants are my favorite. Total came out to 790. Where to next? I'm not gonna lie, I'm not feeling too great. That was way, way, way <laughs> too much sugar. I feel a bit like I feel ill. I feel responsible for this. I should have and gotten us the, the smalls, not the larges of the de Café. And I do the same thing every time. Every time I have, every 50-50, the chocolate croissant has way too much chocolate in it. And I keep ordering it like a clown. Hey, the next time I need to go empty. But on that note, we recognize the balls behind us. The Medici crest, because the Medici actually took over the city. No, I don't believe it. <laughs> During the Renaissance. Never heard of them. It was like their principal port city that they had back in 1500. And for a second, it feels like we're in Florence. It is, same river as Florence, the Arno. Running right through the middle of the city. Is it just me or does that building look crooked? The brown one. I was like the leaning tower. I guess leaning's a common theme here. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are coming up on the Blue Palace. This is Palazzo Blue, the Blue Palace. It's famous because it's blue. <laughs> it's literally the only blue building that you'll find around here. And it's also home to numerous modern art exhibitions. The sun's coming out. Tomorrow. We're out and about. Get your bottom dollars back. 
tomorrow. Okay, Annie. Where are we going next? We are going to go to the night square. It's in the daytime now. Uh -huh. Night with the K. Unlike our island of Sicily, Tuscany wasn't invaded as many times. And so there's not actually as intense of a difference as there is city to city in Sicily. One side's Arab, one side's Norman, one side's Lombard, Greek. That's all different. Here it was the whole like region of Tuscany was kind of ruled by the Etruscans, the Romans, Medici, and then France, from my understanding, from Napoleon. But I think that's about it. They don't have the whole invasions, as it's not an island in the Mediterranean. It's further up, less strategic as it was for a trading port, such as Messina was. So yeah, so everything starts off a little bit similar. It's a little bit similar. Every city definitely has its own vibe, but there's less of a stark contrast from city to city as there was in Sicily. I mean, from one day to the next, one city to the next in Sicily, it's like you're in a completely different world, so. But it's nice, it's still beautiful. If you had watched our Luca video, you would notice our exact same statue in the exact same piazza with the same name. Oh, I'll take a uh, Garibaldi for 500, Steve. Exactly. <sighs> nice. Just a reminder, one of the men that is responsible for the unification of Italy in the 1860s. So the street that we're on right now is called Borgo Stretto and it's a main shopping street here in the city. So this is like the bougie shopping street. You got stores like Rolex, you got bigger designer shops, not just the <laughs> Zara and H&M that like we your, your shop list, at. Your list ended that one. <laughs> yeah, Rolex and um, um, other things. <laughs> well, we shop at Zara and H&M. So. There's gorgeous architecture on this street as well. I mean, we've just come across another beautiful church here. Nishu, how's your education going? What architectural style is this church in? I'll take a Romanesque for 600, Steve. Oh, you got 50 uh, percent. Pisan Romanesque for 600, Steve. Nice, good job. Mm, We're learning. That's, what's up. that's what that looks like. This street definitely feels a little more ancient than Corso Italia. So even though they're both like main shopping streets, they have totally different vibes. Who is this man? Galileo Galilei, a Florentine man who actually helped modernize Pisa during its flourishing golden age. From my understanding, he actually helped to keep the Leaning Tower straight. Or he dropped a ball or something off the top to try and figure out at what angle it was kind of sitting. But he had something vital to do with the city. He dropped two balls off of it at different masses and they both hit the ground. Something physics. My parents, <laughs> my, parents my dad's a physics teacher, my mom's a calc teacher straight over my head. But Galileo dropped two balls of different masses off the Leaning Tower. They both fell. He said, physics, the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still we, we'll, we'll cover the history for you. I cannot cover scientific uh, <laughs> massage of stuff. Okay, and we continue. Ooh, Prada, see, oh, there's another. Okay, so you got Prada on the street. Similar to Zara, but not. Matteo just spent like a minute explaining this to me. Instead of Wi Fi, it's a Wi Fi hotspot because of Pisa. That is clever. So if you need Wi Fi, come get Wi Fi. That took me a minute. And we have arrived at Piazza dei Cavalieri. It's quite a mouthful if you're learning Italian as well because it's a little R's, a little, little E's but also translated to Night Square. There are six roads that actually intersect in this piazza. The Night Square is full of marvelous Renaissance buildings. By far, one of the most impressive buildings is the Palazzo dei Cavalieri, which was built in 1560 by Giorgio Vasari, the same man who built our Vasari corridor above the Ponte Vecchio in Florence. The square has a long and storied history. It was originally the political center of medieval Pisa and served as the headquarters of the Order of the Knights of St. Stephen, which was a Catholic military order established 
established to defend against piracy in the Mediterranean. One of the most prominent features of the piazza is the monument to Cosimo de' Medici I, a statue honoring the Grand Duke of Tuscany. And as we say all the time, the Medici are spread throughout Tuscany, so you're likely to stumble across them very often. Historians don't entirely understand what Cosimo I got up to inside his palazzo, but from my understanding, it's kind of like the frat bros, like how they created like their little fraternity of knights and they obviously fought against piracy in the Mediterranean, but there was a whole bunch of other stuff that went on behind the scenes. A good five, six centuries ago, Pisa was actually one of the most flourishing maritime cities. However, starting from the 1500s, the silting of the Arno River that runs through the center started to create a landmass heading towards the ocean. And so once when Pisa was actually on the coast, is now 10 kilometers or six miles from the sea. What was once the flourishing maritime port is now actually a university city full of students. And so Pisa does have a younger population as the University of Pisa is one of the most prestigious universities you'll find in Italy. From my understanding, the Palazzo is now actually part of the university's buildings. What's pretty crazy is when you're in the open areas here in Pisa, it sounds like the aeroplanes are literally right on your doorstep. And that's actually because Pisa city center is one of the closest city centers to an airport. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is actually only three kilometers from the Pisa airport. And so it sounds like the airplanes are right here. I love how green this city is. Every time we come across like a little piazza or square, there's just these giant, beautiful trees. It really like looks like a little oasis in the middle of the city. I love it. I like that one because it looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> so many airplanes. So it's October 10th today and it is currently 75 degrees Fahrenheit or what is it in Celsius? 22? 22 degrees Celsius. So it's still very warm. I'm actually hot just in my little jean jacket and it's almost 1 p.m. Taking in this time. <gasps> Ooh, we can see the top of the tower from here. Should we stop into our Pam local? <laughs> Before we continue on the journey, gotta hydrate. <laughs> oh, this is like a convenience store. <gasps> oh. Oh my goodness. Is it really only a Euro 80 for this bottle? It's so cute and little. I think we might have to get one of those. Okay, we're getting two of these for later. Okay, we take that back. This Pam is actually way bigger than we thought. Oh my gosh. We walked in here, I was like, oh, it's just like a convenience store, like a, a mini a mini mart. But this is actually huge. This is the first time I've noticed this. I don't know if they've had them in other places, but the uh, chickpea pizza that we had in Luca, they actually sell them here frozen. So you can actually buy it and take it home. All right, no shade on mission that. complete. Oh, there it is. We made it! Yeah, this, this piazza is full of a lot more people, eh? Wow, it is packed! Oh, there's like a sea of people back there. Because the majority of the stuff that we actually book is not so in advance, we're going to buy our tickets here in the Piazza of Miracles. I'm pretty sure we can buy it from the ticket office, a combination ticket so that we can climb the tower, go inside the baptistry, the cemetery, and from my understanding, the museum. So we're going to go check out the ticket prices now. You have to come here behind the tower. Outside the museum, to the right, behind the tower. So we're gonna go see what we have there now. However, it does not feel like 22 degrees. I feel like we're on a full summer's day here in Italy. People are out here literally. Yeah. <laughs> we brought I'm about to take this jacket off. Yeah. Maybe we'll wait an hour or two before climbing the tower. Unless it gets hotter, then we're screwed. From this angle, you can seriously see the tilt. We might have messed up a little. I see the line for the tower is coming out the tower bar quite a way. Maybe you are supposed to book online in advance. Usually, usually we do just rock up for everything. It's worked so far, as it not? Like we always rock up and there's just things. But I mean, we have time. So we're going to go check what the ticket office says. It's not behind this part of the tower behind the other part of the mm. tower, but that's a problem with having something that's round. Where is the behind? So, <laughs> you'll see a ticket sign. 
<laughs> we're just taking a lap. <laughs> now we've taken a nice little walking tour. Oh, uh, same girl, same. We've made it to the ticket office. Tower, this would be the back of it. Do we think that this is the amount of spots left to climb the tower at each of those times? It seems to be in 15 minute increments. Okay, we're gonna have to pick wisely. What time should we do it? Four, is that too late? 3.45, Baptistry is closed? Yes. Okay. Baptistry closed for renovation. We literally just missed it. Mm. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So, we went for the complete combined ticket for 27 euro per person. Without the tower, it's only 10 euro, but obviously we wanted to climb the tower. All right, but the baptistry is closed until the 1st of December. But this is not the first time we've come across something that's closed. Don't expect the combo ticket to be less because they won't, they won't reduce it. But right now we do have a book time for the tower at 3.45. The man did say that these tickets are actually valid for a whole year. So even if you came back next year, you could still come and see the baptistry once it opens again. A few things to note that he said at the desk, you're not allowed to have backpacks or bags whilst you climb the tower. So there's a cloakroom to the side that you have to check your bags in and you have to wait in line 10 minutes before your allotted time slot. So in Italian time, I'd probably come 20 minutes before. It did make me feel slightly better when he said that the baptistry is actually more beautiful from the outside than it is on the inside. So I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take that one. So at least we get to see its beauty from the outside. It is a stunning day. Now let's hit the square of miracles. Your 27 euros gives you access to the monumental cemetery, the cathedral, which is actually free to enter, the baptistry, which is closed, climbing the tower, and what is the last thing? You have access to the Duomo Museum, the Duomo Palace, which is so closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a neat man. Restoration. And some other museum. This reminds me of when we were in Sicily, especially on the steps of the cathedral in Noto. If it's the same artist, which I'm assuming it is because it looks pretty much identical to his work, it's a Polish artist. There's also the fall of Icarus and Agrigento that was very similar to this. I love it, it's stunning. Let's go see if Mishu's right, if it's her artist or not. Seems like a different material, but let's go check the sculpture. Oh, is there a sign? No. Yes, Senga, <gasps> Igor. I was right. Ah, steel trap. I was right. It is the same artist. This is called Fallen Angel. I mean, it's just too unique of a style. I mean, even on the back with that little head, he puts like mini sculptures in the artwork itself. Absolutely stunning. If you saw our Noto video, or our Agrigento video, like those were also just incredible. I mean, when you look at it, it's honestly just absolutely breathtaking. So I love that there's one here. That was very unexpected. So that's the line for the tower. In case you guessed, it's not mobility friendly. There are steps. There is no elevator to the top of the tower. It's 251 steps. But that'll be in two hours. Right now we're gonna start at the Duomo Museum, mostly because it's very hot right now. We need to just cool off. There's also a restaurant slash cafe at the top with a pretty cool view from what we saw online. Don't forget to hydrate. <laughs> so the cafe we're going to should be right there. I love seeing how creative people are getting with their pictures. There is literally a sea of people trying to get their photos with the tower. I mean, we've got standers, sitters, kickers, squatters. I mean, these people are committed. I love it. Anything to get the shot. Okay, stick your hand up. All right, you got it. You almost got it. No, you're going too high. I hate myself right now. Hand up, hand up, and squash the birthday cake. Nice. Let's nah. go. I need a coffee. Look at oh. you. It's so hot. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. I only got sweat in October. Here we go. Let's go. I feel ashamed. Oh, to be like honest, I'm do. actually really stressed. I like don't know. I've been thinking this whole time what I wanted to do and how I wanted to pose, and I've still come up with nothing original. So we're going up to the cafeteria. Oh, how's that view? Okay, perfect. Moist. Wow. Now that's a view. So they've got a little menu here. Seems like a pretty stacked menu. Prosciutto. They've got some first courses, some tiramisu. This is one of the most expensive cafes I've ever been to. Nespresso is three euro fifty. We all must make sacrifices. All right, so why don't you skip all the sweets? Just go straight on to the 
cocktails here are about eight to nine euro. Espresso is three fifty. <laughs> Cappuccino is four. I would probably just do the cappuccino. Or a cocktail. Beer or cocktails? I'll let you decide in the comments below. <laughs> It'd be too late. We would have we would have chosen already. But I must say, sometimes it's worth paying a little extra for a view like this. So we have a lovely view of the tower. We never really sit down for cocktails, but today we just something was calling us to Hugo Spritz. If you don't like Aperol Spritz, go for the Hugo. I don't like Aperol Spritz as much as I've tried, but the Hugo is much sweeter it's made with saint germain so it's a sweeter spritz it came with a few snacks so we have these like these are pretty standard um italian aperitivo snacks so this is like kind of like a little salted cracker and pretty similar to like lay's chips so you get those when you order your drink the number one chip in italy it's just lightly salted okay i'm with michelle on this one the hugo spritz is a lot sweeter not sweeter nicer than the apple spritz there's nine bucks though I've had more expensive cocktails though. America gets the cake for that one. But nine bucks is a bit, a bit steep. But in America, you, it doesn't come with snacks. <laughs> and you have to tip 20% in the States. No tip here, plus snacks, plus a view. Can't beat it. Hugo Sports is definitely better than apples. So fresh food. All right, we're all done. They left our little order receipt here on the table, so we're gonna go pay. There you go. I know this seems kind of counterproductive. Pay for a ticket, skip the thing that you get with the ticket, go to the thing that's free, see the thing that's free from the outside because it's closed, and then climb the tower. That's the only way that we could have got access to the tower. You see what they do, they always add you either get everything minus the tower or everything and the tower but there's just a huge price difference between the two so it's like what does one do one, you do the tower one commits oh hello wow that was aggressive i think that man wanted to be in the video <laughs> okay i'm just gonna i'll just it got hot the marble used in the baptistry the cathedral and the tower all come from a quarry a little bit north from here called Carrara and well as you can tell it's very white and so when the sun comes down it reflects off of there and it's extra bright <laughs> behind me and the most noticeable thing you will find in Pisa besides the tower is the Duomo of Pisa. Construction of the Pisa Cathedral began in 1064 and continued over several centuries with additions and alterations made by various architects and artists. When it was built, it was the largest Roman Catholic cathedral in the world. The cathedral was consecrated in 1118, but its construction was ongoing for several centuries, leading to a fusion of architectural styles over time. It is a prime example of Pisan Romanesque architecture, characterized by its blend of Romanesque and Byzantine elements. The facade features intricate marble decoration, including columns, arches, and sculptures, showcasing the skill of medieval Italian craftsmen. The interior is designed in a Latin cross layout and has beautiful frescoes. Oh my goodness, look at that ceiling. The cathedral entrance is free, however, you have to go to the ticket office to get a free ticket to get your free entrance. Not entirely sensical, but maybe it stops hordes of people coming in at once. Oh, okay, so you can get a audio tour for two euro. So there's headsets here, and they offer it in a bunch of different languages, it seems. Oh yeah, you can't walk around with them. I mean, they're attached, but you could just stand here and listen while you get the uh, information. There's a lot of banging in here. I think they are busy restoring something. So it's definitely the least peaceful church we've been in. The ceiling in here is just spectacular. You gotta love that the Medici crest is literally in the center of it, though. New opinion, it is very hard to appreciate a place of worship when there is a whole bunch of noise going on. I mean, it doesn't really feel like a church in here right now. It just feels like a theater that's got a lot of sounds and just a building. No, it's kind of sad, actually. It is sad. But I if can, you ever saw our Riche video, those churches oh, yeah. had themes to them and had music playing. They had playlists. Now that was, that's how churches should be. This banging, it's a little bit frustrating, but beautiful nonetheless. But restoration. <laughs> okay, so they seem to be restoring this part of the cathedral which is why there's so much banging 
So something's going on over there that they're fixing up. The most important thing inside the cathedral. This pulpit by Giovanni Pisano. Some of the first works of modern sculpture, he actually started using depth inside this pulpit and this kind of set forward like the future of sculpture. And this was a good 700 years ago. It is bright. That is a stunning cathedral and the ceiling in there is phenomenal. Unfortunate that they're doing a little bit of restoration because it, all you hear is the banging echoing throughout the church. But hopefully on your visit that will be done and you can get it in some peace and quiet. But it is absolutely breathtaking inside. I just heard a man saying that he went to go get a free ticket for the cathedral and they were all finished of them. So apparently that's a thing. If they run out of tickets, you have to pay seven euros to enter the cathedral, which is quite excessive, to be honest. Especially when half of it's under restoration and there's all the noise. And because it's free most of the time. But just be aware of that. Behind me, and actually taller than the Leaning Tower, you will find the Baptistry of St. John. With a diameter of 33 meters and a height of about 54 meters, this place of worship is the largest baptistry in the world, dedicated to St. John the Baptist. Construction of the baptistry began in the 12th century and continued over several centuries, resulting in a blend of architectural styles, primarily Romanesque and Gothic. The baptistry was originally built for baptisms. It's renowned for its impressive acoustics, which make it a popular venue for musical performances. Coming into the cloak room to drop off the backpack. Ready you need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they gave us our little marker. We are 31R. Pretty sure he said 21, so this is going to be quite interesting when we get back. I there. also heard 21, oh. so. <laughs> Hopefully, we're getting something designer. Maybe there'll be some gold bricks yeah. in that locker, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. It is 3:30. I'm quite a. I got my mom's jeans. I'm quite a nerd. I got to be a, at places at the right time and checking my things early. I'm not one to run last minute, so we 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 good. We're okay for now. So we got 15 minutes. It said in there 15 minutes before you should drop off your stuff. So there is still a ton of people out. So the line is here, right on the back side of the church. I see we're not the only people that are waiting here early. The rest are standing to the side as they get to the front. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, you got a little checklist here. You have your ticket. If your time is next, you have no bag with you. Mateo thinks he's the modern-day Michelangelo of photography. 
What are we doing? Ooh, panoramic, panoramic, panoramic. Don't stop. Uh, did you get it? It looks like a stubby tower. I can't see anything. <laughs> stubby tower. This looks pretty cool. I mean, you can just tell from here that that is not straight. As I said in our climbing the Duomo video, what clowns would climb an 800 year old building? Well, now we're about to climb an 800 year old tower that leans over. So these clowns, these Put a clowns. a red nose on us. <laughs> and hire us for a birthday party. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Bucket listing. Neither Bucket one of us, listing. neither one of us has ever climbed the tower. Here we are, 54 year old. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a lot. Because oh, it, it goes from 10 to 27 per person, just if you want to climb the tower. Grazie. And the first steps down, to take the first steps up. Oh, it is skewed. Oh my goodness. Oh, you already feel like you're going sideways. That's crazy. Oh my god, which you? I can feel myself like falling back. I was, I took two steps back and all of a sudden I felt like I was sliding backwards. You can literally, you can literally feel that this is on an angle. That is crazy. I was like, why am I falling? <laughs> this is nuts. And so like when you walk this way, it actually feels like you're walking. It's really not that impressive from the inside. Just empty. Empty. Oh, that's wild. So we entered and they made us wait in this like little room for the group before us to come back down the stairs before we go back up. Whoa. For a second there, I'm actually getting like a little bit of motion sickness at this angle. It's hard to see, but they're actually slanted. And they're worn in the middle. And they're worn down. So like right in the middle of this step, you can feel there's a dent from all the people that have walked up here. This is quite weird on your senses. So strange. I feel like I'm like tipping over. Your left leg definitely feels it more than your right. Oh, there's like a lookout point here. Whoa, geez. This is actually a bit disorientating. It's very wide. It's kind of like something over. It's not even funny. steps to the top, so roughly about half of the Florence wall. You can actually see this is how the walls board. are actually angled. This is seriously like a trip for your senses. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just want to lean back. senses you see the church they do have these cages similar to the towers in Florence but it's actually only like eye height do we go further up oh okay I guess we're not at the top level yet yes that makes sense because there are bells at the top okay so we're on the first level now the top level is you can do the top <laughs> There we go, cheering each other on. Oh, this is uh -oh. cool. Now we're, now we're getting into the flow of things with this spiral staircase again. Oh, okay. I always duck because I feel like I'm about to have to smack my head on something. Why do we trust this? I don't know. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. These are so narrow. Okay, alrighty. Now we made it. That first, that first one fooled us. We thought we made it to the top. This is the top. 
Somehow it gives me an uneasy an feeling. Yeah, I know. I'm like, like, I still feel off balance. Well, it's so annoying that there's just this thin layer of concrete below us until the bottom. And also it's hollow and leaning, but cool nonetheless. So you can still see the church from here behind the bells. Did that feel hard to you? Did that feel pretty manageable? Yeah, it's kind of like the towers in Luca, not Florence. Florence was double this. <laughs> that last staircase felt very similar to the Duomo though. Oh, and so when you were at the bottom, you see straight up to here where you start. <laughs> straight down. <laughs> Let's go this way. So there's the middle section with the bells, but you can actually come and sit on these steps here. Are we on the smaller side or the taller side right now? That's the question. Smaller. You think? I do feel a bit of an incline here. It does feel like we're slanting. Do you think it's worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. But it really makes you appreciate how tall the Florence Duomo and Bell Tower are because they are literally double this so like this is impressive but like, the fact that it can double that's wild still get a gorgeous view of the city though and then the inside part's just there the bells So this is a full 360 degree view up here. Now you can feel that you're going uphill when you're walking. <laughs> and that's the Pisa Stadium right there. That's us at the top right there. <laughs> you can also see the ancient Pisa walls running around the city from up here. And you can see people walking on the walls, like the walkway above the walls. It's about three kilometers long or almost two miles. So hopefully we'll be doing that after our activities today. I don't know if you can tell on video. You can definitely tell in person that that's like angled down. Your other telltale sign is the bell. Like, can you see the bell oh, yeah, sitting at an angle? Oh yeah, it's not straight. And look, it's actually it's damaged not. with the marble where it must have been blown into it. Oh, that's so interesting, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's damaged on this side, but the marble's fine on that side. Unless they just restored it. <laughs> no, because look, the other bell's also, look, look, if you yeah. look through the gap there, look at that bell, it's sitting at an angle. You can see that that bell there is also slanted. Ready to go down? <laughs> yeah, that's that stairwell. Okay, you gotta be careful now because you have people are coming up, you're going down, so you just gotta be patient and be polite. It's a tight squeeze on the stairwell, so. Coming down. Coming down. Corner. Corner. Is that what they say at restaurants? Yeah. Corner. Tilting corner. Now these stairs are really, oh, no. really worn down. My motion sickness is kicking in. Oh, I'm so sorry. See, this okay. is where it gets tricky. Okay. I'm just gonna hide the wall here. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, it's a tight squeeze. You're good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Be careful. These steps slide one way. Nope. Okay. This is Sorry, thanks. <laughs> Still angled though. Still angled. I feel like I need to keep my arms all like this because I might fall either which way. 
<laughs> okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. You do get some pretty views from here too, so if you did need to stop and take a break. Okay, and we're, and we're moving, and we're grooving, and we're grooving. We got so much to do still, and it's already four o'clock. These stairs are extremely not ankle friendly. Yeah. The groove in the middle makes you very wobbly. I feel like every time I step, I'm leaning more on my right foot now. You do climb and go down very fast though. So you, you can, could do it really fast if you had limited time. So bizarre, now we get a point where I actually feel like I'm being like pushed down the stairs. These stairs are angled downwards. And this material is like very slippery, so I'm almost worried my foot's going to slip over. Yeah. Almost there. I feel like I'm in like a tumble dryer. Right. We made it. Oh, wow, that was crazy. Not gonna lie, I feel a little discombobulated. Yeah, that kind of throws you off a little bit, eh? Oh. <laughs> I literally feel like I'm gonna tip over. That was cool though. Nice. I almost forgot we had to pick up our backpack. Arm. I don't know why I climbed it with my jacket on. Just don't um, forget to get your bag because I'm pretty sure there's limited numbers every time they do it. So I don't know what happens to your bag if you forget it there. Also, if you do want to go into the church or the baptistry when it's open, you need to bring something to cover your shoulders. So a shawl, a jacket, something like that. Don't forget it. Well, in any city, but just also for this one. Pizza could be done in half a day, but if you want to do all of this stuff, half a day is not enough. Agreed. A full day. <laughs> We're currently walking alongside the Campo Santo Monumental Cemetery. We are running out of time though. I'm pretty sure most of these places close at like 6, 6.30, but also unfortunately can't go in the baptistry. We might be giving the museum a skip today. We would rather prioritize walking on top of the walls. It's crazy because when we got here, I was like, oh my God, we have the whole day. And then all of a sudden now I feel like, and we've just been enjoying ourselves. And now I feel like, oh wow, we are we're out of time. So. Give yourself enough time. If you want to do everything, you actually do need a full, full day here. <laughs> Definitely. This is the entrance. Yeah. They seem to be restoring the frescoes here on the wall. If you've watched any of our other Italy videos, you'll know that every city you go to, something is being restored at some time. But at least they do take the time and put the money into restoring them. So that's why it's kind of a bummer when they are, but you can't be mad because in the future, it'll still be there for you and your future generations to look at. This is some Hogwarts vibes. If you take a look behind me, you'll notice a lot of frescoes are actually quite destroyed. They are currently in the process of restoring them as many as they can, but this is actually because of the bombings in World War II. So a lot of the frescoes were lost, but they are trying to bring some back, which is just quite wonderful. Oh, yeah. The frescoes do depict stories from the Old and New Testament. And the floor here is just covered in like tomb after tomb. It's hard to know where to step because I hate like walking on people's tombs, but there's just it's literally the entire floor. I just want to quick and let me tell you a quick little fact. Ooh, I love facts. Built in the 13th century as a burial ground for the city's most prominent citizens. According to tradition, the inner courtyard is built around a shipload of sacred soil brought straight from Jerusalem and happens to be taken from the exact spot where Jesus was crucified. During the Third Crusade, the soil was brought to Pisa by the Archbishop, and that's how Campo Santo, the Holy Field, was named. It is renowned for its striking Gothic architecture, characterized by its arches, intricate detailing, and its beautiful marble facade. I was not expecting this, to be honest with you. And now there's a room below my <laughs> It's so funny, I like it. That must be its like little charging yeah, dock. A charging That's dock. so funny. Oh, look at it go. Desperate times call for desperate measures. One disadvantage of selling on a phone. <laughs> There are a lot of saints, reliquaries in here. Learned that term at the Florence Duomo Museum. I think they have parts of the people inside of like gold and silver and, uh, and like, like those things. We got Fibonacci here. Okay, Matteo has come now to take a closer look at this Roomba lawnmower. Called an automower. 
Should I get you one for Christmas, even though we don't have a lawn? Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I can't get over this. <laughs> you go, get Coco. You go. Okay. Anyway, this is holy soil. <laughs> Okay, and we are done. We need to vote. Who do we think's committed the most? I think if you're standing on one of those things, you're kind of looking for an accident. Yeah, that doesn't seem safe. Oh yeah, see, there, there are a couple. I think, I think I saw them earlier. They, they've, they're really just committed to this uh, photo shoot here. So the leading tower actually took 199 years to build. It was first built in the first two levels, and then because the soil was so soft, it actually began to lean. And then there were wars happening and they didn't have money to actually pay to fix it. So then after the time the wars ended, the ground had actually got harder because the sea had been retreating and the soil had just become hardened. So then they built the next section. Then from my understanding, there was another war, less money. So this thing eventually took 200 years to get built. But it did get built. Thank you. It still leans and had to do a massive renovation in the 90s so that it could be corrected a little bit. It used to be about four and a half degrees. I think they've moved it to four or something, which is a safer angle for us to climb. And there we have it, folks. That was your walking tour of the One Street in Pisa. No, just kidding. This entire piazza is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Matteo and I seem to be on a liquid diet today because I've yet to put any real food in my stomach and it's 5 p.m. Again, you can take bottles out of a six pack. It is allowed. All right. You don't have time to eat which you should make time to eat. These liquid proteins should hold you over for a little bit, but I'm still starving. <laughs> let's go, the walls are closing soon. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. How did the day get away from us? Now we're gonna go see how much the walls are. I mean, they close in 45 minutes, so if they're too expensive, we're just gonna give it a miss. We'll like, see how it goes. I feel like I'm, you're walking me like a puppy because I'm attached to you. By the way, if you guys heard of our <laughs> buy us a camera for Christmas, please. This is how we are filming now. We're connected to a charger. We need to buy Don't some. Like we need to get a camera that we can change our batteries. We've been using an iPhone for the last three years. <laughs> we haven't yet had the funds to upgrade, but one day we'll get there. One day. One day. Hopefully, oh. it's not in too many more days. We'll yeah. see. We're on nine and a half kilometers for the day. Which is shocking because I feel like we've just done a loop in this same area. Oh, wait, I thought it was around the corner. Here. I think it's at that tower. I think it's the tower over there. Not bad, I may have misjudged this. So, the entrance, if you want to walk on the walls, is right next to Campo Santo. Just Google Mura di Pisa. Mura is a wall. M U R A. And here we are. But let's just see what the price and situation is right now. Let's see. It's October. See, the hours change per season. What? Is that five it's euro? Exactly five euro. Okay, last entrance 5.30, but it closes at six. Do you want to go up quick? Let's yeah, just go up time. quick. Okay. Do a billet, for favor. It closes at six o'clock, yeah. so okay. we don't have time to do it. Okay, okay. Can we, yeah, we just we'll go just... up and down here. Yeah. Yes. We have half an hour. Actually, we have 35 minutes. 35 minutes. It's very dark in here. Well, there's quite a few stairs here. The walls are actually 11 meters out. Or 36 feet for those in the metric system. Wait. Imperial system. Imperial system. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Okay. This was worth it. We got 30 minutes to enjoy it. Yeah. It says 250 meters. That way we can get a view of the piazza. The next exit is 800 meters that way. I don't think we have time to make it all the way there. So we're just gonna hang out here for a bit. I'm so happy we did this. Yeah. Oh, whoa. There is a full cemetery here between the walls. That was unexpected. Oh, I like this much better than the view from the tower. This is way less obstructed. The walls are 800 years old and run about three kilometers around Pisa, just under two miles. And the fact that they're in such good condition is because Pisa was never actually attacked. And so these walls never had to get used. And so they literally just run around the inside of the city. They actually look really cool. Just like what you would see in like the movies, you know, back good 800 years ago, middle ages. I like history like that. Onwards we go.
personal opinion, the city is actually perfect from this height. I do prefer it to the top of the tower. Definitely pay the five euro each for the walls and come take a walk up here. You got three kilometers. You can walk around the whole the old city. Not to mention there's only like three staircases versus <laughs> 251 steps for the tower. It looks like in front of us, you can't actually carry on. So I think you have to walk all the way around if you'd like to see the three kilometers. Yeah, this seems to have brought us to the end of the wall here. Now that is a view. I prefer that. This makes me happy. See, I'm so happy we decided to go for it. An excellent view from this very small corner. As I said, this is honestly the perfect height to see the city. I don't know, you can just appreciate it a little bit more from here. All right, now it's time to go. This was my favorite thing that we've done today. Why are you singing? I don't know. So out we go, Ushita. Made it. Two minutes to spare. All in all, when people say that Pisa is a one day visit, pretty sure you can visit in one day. Don't do half a day. I think it's too little, but it is a cool city. I mean, if you wanted to go into stuff, it needs a full day. If you just wanted to come peek around and maybe grab a snack or a lunch or something, then a half a day. But if you actually want to go in and, and see things and walk on the walls, then yeah, I definitely recommend a full day as well. I mean, I feel like we thought we we're like, oh, we have time. And yeah. somehow we just like, it's like 6 p.m. now. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't have the amount that like a city such as Florence has, but, but there's it, still a lot it takes to time. Yeah. It takes time. It yeah. looks small, but it's like packed. Yeah. It's a time to pop a little bubbly. Uh, sadly, it's too early for dinner. So we're just going to have a little bit of a 1 euro 80 Prosecco. I mean, it's 1 euro 80 for this bottle. Are you joking? I mean, it's got the DOC. Really label on it <laughs> so i'm feeling like that was actually a pretty sweet deal but it's been in my backpack all day so it's shaken up and warm we're gonna open it up very yeah. cautiously happy birthday to me <laughs> seven months yeah. there's no cork <laughs> love it it's efficient all right happy birthday for next year <laughs> my 31st <laughs> we're a few months away but yeah you've got a feeling this thing's gonna pop off Oh, I can hear it fizzing. Let me just let out that fizz. Oh, oh that was, that was so anticlimactic. <laughs> that was really sad. <laughs> How warm is it? It's all right. It's not terrible. It is extra dry though. <laughs> <laughs> Here's dinner. Yeah, there we go. So the problem that we are having presently is that we wanted to try this restaurant called Bronzo, but like most Italian restaurants, they're only open from like 12 to 3 or 2.30, and then they close and they only open again around 7 or 7.30. And that's like pretty standard in the country. And this is why we can go a whole filming day without eating. <laughs> it's 6 p.m. and I would happily sit down and have dinner, but we still have an hour and a half to go if we want to eat there. Yeah. Uh, and the sun is setting. Unfortunately, we missed lunchtime and I think we're gonna have to just mm. figure out something something else now. So we're gonna walk and see what we can find. We have too many Proseccos, so mm -hmm. hopefully by the time we finish those, maybe we'll be hanging around late enough to actually I thought you go said to too many, but then I thought, you, too, but then you said many. too many. Too many. Prosecco's. There we go. I haven't tried it yet. Let's see. Mm. Definitely good. tastes like it's worth more than a Euro 80. <laughs> so that's good. Heads up, if you're prone to mosquito bites, do not stand on the grass for more than like a second because I was fine all day and now we've been standing on the grass for a few minutes and I've just gotten like a million bites in a couple minutes. There's so many instructions flying. I think people are misunderstanding the person they're with because they're hearing different instructions from different people. But do you want to see the best one? Hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. Cheers. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Dink. This is the most aggressive photo taking spot I've ever come across. Like this is like, this is like Clownville 101, <laughs> like seriously. What's the first thing you said when you 
came and arrived in this exact square. Which reminds you of? Disneyland. <laughs> kind of like Disneyland. Kind of like an amusement park, yeah. except with one ride. Like the rest of the city doesn't really feel really touristic. And we don't really mind touristic stuff because that just means it's popular. But this, this square is like, this square is next level. Yeah. Not the most fun place to say so. But you should come and see it anyway. Take your yeah. photo, be cheesy, who cares? Exactly. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. It's almost 7 p.m. We found a deal for two pizzas for 10 euro. So I think that's the next uh, plan of attack here. So we're very hungry. I, I might be falling apart only slightly because all I've had today is sugar and coffee. Yeah. And a baby Prosecco. This tends to happen on filming days. We like forget to eat. So our energy tends to flag toward the end of the day. Yeah, well, since you okay. see, we also we're gonna sit down at a restaurant. But like 18, 16, 15 euros for a plate of like pasta or whichever two meals, one ends up being 40, 50 euros. Plus there's the coperta yeah. most of the time, which is the cover. So you don't tip here, but when you see coperta, that's like the cover per person. Yeah. That kind of, it is like your preset tip or for the water and bread, which adds a euro or two yeah. or three per person to the tab. We're just not at that stage yet where we can yeah. sit down at a restaurant and eat. So. We're gonna find out this thing said it was pizza day, two margaritas for 10 bucks, so. Which sounds like our kind of deal. Damn straight. So. That's budget traveling right there. Just, the mission after that would just be finding a place to sit because uh, there doesn't seem to be yeah, any and... benches in the main piazza here. Normally we like to eat in the main piazza of a city. So we're gonna have to sort that out once we get our takeaways. But so let's check. See. It's a gorgeous evening tonight. Where's our spot? It's here. So we're just down the street from the cathedral, but we saw a sign here, which definitely caught our attention. I love this too. This is also how <laughs> they're like air conditioning. Come inside. I feel like we're thrifting here. What's it? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> okay, no a porta via. Two pizza margherita. So we're going to get our takeaway pizzas, but they don't have boxes yet. So we're not getting no takeaway pizzas, but it's still pizza day. Two margaritas for five bucks. 10 bucks. Five, 10 bucks? Five bucks each. Nothing too exciting tonight, just some margaritas and a beer. And he said no coperta. Uh -huh. No cover charge. Oh. Buonasera. Oh, grazie mille. Grazie. I am starving, so this is perfect. Mm. Five bucks, huge pizza. Ooh, that was hot. Successful day. It feels damn good to be adventuring again after a while, but it's definitely gonna take some time to get used to us walking around so much again. If you guys have visited Italy, you know how much you can walk in a day. Definitely comment below and let us know what is the furthest you've ever walked in an Italian city in a day, because our feet are really struggling again. It's gonna take a couple cities to get used to just that excessive walking. Cheers. <laughs> I'm always happy with the margarita. We both are. Hey, more flavor than less flavor. Let's eat. Oh, that looks crispy. Mm. This place has really good reviews and I can see why. It's a delicious margarita pizza. That's good cheese. <laughs> Cheers. In case you guys were wondering where your five euro pizza donations go to, here they are right here. We weren't joking when we said, buy us a pizza gets us a five euro pizza. This is a five euro pizza. By the way, the link <laughs> is in the comment section and in the description. Ooh, you get a lot for five euro. We just finished dinner. The margarita pizza actually was very nice. What was it called? <laughs> Santa Maria? Santa Maria Pizzeria. Yeah, well, it's got a nice ring to it. But uh, we need to go to the station to get our train, but we just wanted to see the tower lit up at night. If it's, if it's lit up, we don't know. We're about to round the corner and see. If we have time, we're gonna squeeze in some gelato, but... It is a half an hour to the station. Yeah, the gelateria so... is about 10 minutes from here. So, so we might be cutting it fine. The moment of I mean... true... Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought it'd be like, so we thought it would be a, maybe a little bit more lit up with spotlights. It's about 8 p.m. right now. Normally, like with the Duomo and stuff in Florence, there's way more lights to really see the buildings. You can still see them. There's still some street lights going on. Very pretty, but just not as like in your face as I thought it would be. <laughs> I really want to try this gelateria, so we need to like pick up the pace before we get to the train station. Ooh, 
I'm coming back up on the Arno. Oh, perfect. We're here. We're going to have to make this quick. Gelateria de Coltelli. There we go. Gelateria of knobs. I don't really understand that. What are we getting? Rosmarino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste it to see if we're going to commit. Uh, did you like it? It so is rosemary. There's rosemary. I love rosemary. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe not a whole batch of that. I mean, that's good, but that might be a lot for a cup. Okay. Whoa, that is crazy though. Banana, mango, pera. E in base a chi lo assaggia percepisce un sapore molto. That's so interesting. You need to try this. Wow, these are so. These are the most interesting gelato flavors. I've ever come across. That's so weird. That's so confusing. Mm. <laughs> That's another strange. I like that one. Look at that too. <laughs> so here you've just got the photos. There's no names, but they're in the tins, which means that they're made with all natural ingredients. Keep some fresh. Okay. Sticking to your Sicilian roots. I always go to try. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we have like, <laughs> grazie. So I got the salted caramel with chocolate. Matteo got the cassata with pistachio. 6.40 for both. We got to go and catch our train now. Okay, let me get uh -huh. this pistachio quick. Grazie mille, buona serata. We need napkins. It doesn't taste sweet like the cassata. It's actually more of a delicious vanilla with Chop chips, that's damn good. That's yeah. Damn good pistachio. You see, it's not too green. It's more brown, like the color of the nut. Delicious. So I just tasted this one. It's a Venezuelan, I, I think it's a Venezuelan chocolate. It was delicious, so. Mm. That was good. I didn't get a chance to try this one though. It's the, I think she said sea salt caramel. Oh. Oh wow. Oh, I'm actually really happy. I didn't know if these would be good together. <laughs> That's actually an excellent combo. Mm. Is it good? Can we see some combo? Mm. We really have to catch we our train. We have to catch our train. That is good. Did you try, you did, you did try the Venezuelan chocolate? I ate the whole thing last time. Mm. That is so good. You guys are passing to get 100 percent coming. And then also just try the random flavors. Yeah. They were really good and very interesting, but just too much for a whole cup. Yeah, rosemary strange. And they're, 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 they're always changing. The unique flavors are always changing. So you never know what you're gonna get. Next time we'll come back and see what else they have. Perfect. All right, now time for the train. Grazie. 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 They also sit you on the Arno, have a couple beers, watch the river down below. How are you going to eat? I don't know. I need to put the camera down. Okay. And we're signing off from the streets of Pisa. Good night. Next, we'll see you in Pistoia. Whoa. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.